And thank you, everyone, for joining me today. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Corey Diaz, CEO and co-founder of Anfield Energy. Anfield is a company with all of its assets in the U.S. Uh, it has a near-term path to production using a hub-and-stroke strategy, uh, which I'll discuss uh, during this presentation. Yep, safe harbor. Please read at your leisure. Capital markets profile. Uh, the company has uh, roughly 624 uh, million shares outstanding. Largest shareholder is Uranium Energy Corporation. Uh, we have about 30% of our shareholders um, uh, who are institutions. Uh, management holds roughly 4 to 5% of uh, the shares outstanding. Uh, so retail represents about 50% of the shares. You can see David is a uh, uh, research analyst covering the stock with a uh, share price target of 25 cents. my glasses. <laughs> there we go. That's much clearer. Great. And so reasons to invest in Anfield. Uh, we've got a large portfolio of conventional uranium assets in the United States, a very safe jurisdiction. Uh, these assets are underpinned by the Shooter and Canyon Mill. It's one of only three licensed, permitted, and constructed conventional uranium mills in the United States, uh, strategically located in the five corners of uh, the United States in terms of uh, production, historically prolific area for uranium production. Uh, we've got a good mix of historic and um, uh, updated resource related to uranium. So we, we tend to buy assets which either have past production, uh, a current or historic resource in place. So we don't spend a lot of time on exploration. That's not our role. Uh, we did acquire the Slick Rock project from UEC earlier this year uh, by exchanging our ISR products in Wyoming. Uh, the Slick Rock project sits right next to our West Slope projects in Colorado, so it provides uh, an even extended production opportunity for us in the Colorado area. And then finally, we're debt free. We've been in a debt position uh, since 2015. Earlier this year, we removed that debt through a transaction with UEC, whereby we exchanged our debt uh, for some shares of Anfield uh, and some cash that we raised uh, through Red Cloud and Haywood. And then finally, we did an asset swap uh, to get Slick Rock and to trade away our ISR property. So all of our assets are conventional, underpinned by our wholly owned mill shittering. So I won't spend a lot of time on the macro view of uh, the market. I'm sure you're very familiar with it if you're a uranium buffs at all. Uh, but I think it's important to note that you know the Russia-Ukraine uh, conflict has exacerbated uh, the issues related to supply, especially for North America. The fact that Russia does uh, represent a significant portion of conversion and enrichment services uh, creates an issue for those in the West who are looking for material to ultimately be put through uh, their reactors. Uh, we also know the fact that China is getting closer to Kazakhstan is also a risk of material flowing eastward instead of westward. And then finally, Cameco signing contracts with China Nuclear means that material that's being produced in North America is essentially going east once again, exacerbating the risk of materials being available for U.S. utilities. And U.S. utilities represent the largest install base of reactors in the world. Uh, in terms of the government in the U.S., uh, looking for ways to support uh, nuclear, uh, obviously we've talked about in the past the idea of the uranium reserve. This is something that has been talked about since 2017. We also know the government's looking for more money to reduce reliance on Russian uh, enrichment and uh, conversion. We've got the fact that you know, Converdine is opening up in 2023 and uh, looking to expand its services. Uh, we also know that uh, the Inflation Reduction Act has provided monies uh, to uh, utilities in order to extend the life of a lot of reactors, which once again implies that there, there will be a need for more material, uh, uranium to flow through in order to uh, extend the life of those reactors. So we think that we're in a great position in terms of being able to supply U.S. utilities especially. Our hub and spoke strategy, as I mentioned, uh, consists of the Shearing Canyon Mill. You see the yellow dot that represents the mill itself. 
Uh, the three projects which are core to the strategy are the Velvetwood project, the West Slope project, and the Slick Rock project. Uh, the Velvetwood project will be the first feed into our mill once the mill is up and running, followed by the West Slope. The West Slope has uh, recent production, as uh, so recent as 2006, uh, did produce 1.3 million pounds of uranium and 6.6 .6 million pounds of vanadium. Essentially, the projects in Colorado are vanadium mines with a little bit of uranium in them. And then finally, uh, we look to Slick Rock as we look to upgrade that resource and get it ready for production as part of the pipeline. So we talked a little bit about these assets. You can see in the picture to the right, that's a picture of the mill, uh, close up, and then the picture below is a picture of the mill from a distance. You can see that it's on a mesa. Uh, it's isolated. There are no risks of anyone being around. Uh, there are no native issues in the area where the mill's located. So uh, we're very comfortable that there will be no risk to the mill being reopened. Uh, the mill itself we acquired back in 2015 from Uranium One. Uh, it's a 750 ton per day mill. Just in comparison, the uh, Energy Fuels White Mesa Mill is 2,000 tons per day. Uh, we have a license capacity here about a million pounds per year. Uh, so we can easily fill that with the feed that we have through the three products that I uh, alluded to earlier. The Velvetwood project we acquired at the same time as we acquired Shittering uh, from Uranium One. Uh, past production of 4 million pounds of uranium, 5 million pounds of vanadium. Uh, a current resource of 4.6 million pounds of uranium and a PEA in place which returned uh, roughly $60 million. Uh, we are actually updating the PEA today to incorporate uh, the value of the vanadium on site. And given that there was production of vanadium in the past, uh, we know that there's uh, vanadium there. Uh, the West Slope project we acquired from Cotter Corporation, which is owned by uh, General Atomics, a weapons defense manufacturer out of uh, California, a multi-billion dollar private company. Uh, back in 2018, we acquired 11 million pounds of uranium and 53 million pounds of vanadium uh, at this site. Uh, Westlow consists of nine mines. Uh, we have put a resource out for four of the nine mines, uh, which returned 5.4 million, 5 million pounds of uranium and roughly 27 million pounds of vanadium. That would likely be the second feed into the mill once the mill is up and running following uh, Velvet Wood. The other five projects we may look to combine with the Slick Rock project given the proximity of Slick Rock to some of these other projects that we hold. Uh, so certainly we'd have a, a pipeline of more than 20 years of production of both uranium and vanadium. So our steps to production, uh, in the near term we're focused on shootering and velvet wood. Uh, shootering itself uh, we're looking to refurbish the mill. The cost is roughly 25 to 30 million dollars based on preliminary numbers. Uh, the shittering uh, mill is relatively close to velvet wood, and so we think it's a good combination with which to start. Uh, medium term production, mid term, we're looking at West Slope. West Slope produced uh, back in 2006. Uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, you know, at the very low cost in terms of capex to get these, mills, these mines up and running, given that the mill uh, cost will be burdened with uh, velvet wood. Uh, but West Slope, you know, the cost to start each of those mines is less than a million dollars because they've had recent production. And then finally, longer term, we'd be looking at Slick Rock, uh, which is the asset we acquired from UEC earlier this year. Uh, our plan is to put a PA out on that resource uh, sometime in 2023. So a little bit more detail related to Velvet Wood, uh, acquired back in 2015. Uh, historic production, as I mentioned, um, 4 million pounds of uranium, 5 million pounds of vanadium. Uh, access to infrastructure, there's lots of infrastructure in place, roads, uh, power, water, uh, and we're also working on the plan of operations for the project to ultimately get the uh, mining permit updated uh, for Velvet Wood. The West Slope project uh, acquired in, from Collar Corporation, as I mentioned, uh, represents nine DOE leases. Uh, there's past production, 1.3 million pounds of uranium, 6.6 .6 million pounds of vanadium. Uh, the adits are in place. You can see the picture to the top right. That is a picture of the mine called JD-8. Uh, the adit is open. There's material in the mines. Uh, there's equipment in the mines that we can use for continued production. Uh, our plan is to update the resource that we put out earlier this year uh, and create a PEA related to those four projects and then look to uh, get ready for production once the mill is ready for accepting material. The Slick Rock product, which we acquired from uh, UBC earlier this year, 
Uh, you can see on the bottom left, uh, the green space, so the green uh, shape is uh, Slick Rock. The middle blue project uh, or space or, or shape, sorry, is the, um, the SR13 mine, which is one of the West Slope properties that I mentioned earlier. So you can see how close this project is to our other projects and why it would make sense for us to potentially combine these products to create a greater resource for Slick Rock and uh, the remaining West Slope properties. So peer comparison. So you can see the AC on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, you know, we check all of the boxes in terms of where the assets are, in terms of what we're focused on, what byproduct we have, and our production facility. I think production facility is the most important point on the slide. If you look at the peers to the immediate right of AEC, each of which has a production facility, but clearly the market caps are significantly higher than, uh, than Anfield. Uh, of the four that are there, uh, you know, two are producers and two are relative near, near term producers, uh, but the market caps dwarf ours significantly. You know, we'd have to move up eight to nine times to meet the smallest of our peers. Uh, the next four along, Peninsula, uh, Consolidated, Laramide, and Western, um, uh, two of those have access to facilities, so do not own facilities, but um, have third party processing relationships. Uh, Laramide and Western do not at the moment, uh, but yet their market caps are still higher than ours. Uh, we think there's a disconnect there, and we think that certainly you know, we should be trading, you know, if not in line with the peers who have near-term production, certainly in line with or higher than those that don't have access to uh, producing uh, facilities or production facilities. So uh, we think there's a lot of upside in terms of our valuation given our asset base, given our portfolio, uh, and given our, our um, ownership of a processing facility. Uh, management directors, I uh, won't spend any time on myself, but I will highlight Ken Mashinsky, who recently joined our board. Uh, Ken was uh, the president of Cotter when we acquired the West Oak properties from him, uh, from Cotter. Uh, he's also worked for General Atomics for 33 years, uh, worked in the nuclear division, uh, worked for Quasar Resources, was the president. Uh, Quasar is a five million pound per year uh, producer of uranium down in Australia. Uh, has been on the management committee of Converdine, so is familiar with the conversion side of the business, uh, and has also worked in sales and marketing, and has done government lobbying uh, for uh, General Atomics. So he has a whole suite of attributes which are complementary to what we have on our board, and I think it underscores our commitment to moving forward to production. And these are the other two assets. I won't spend uh, much time on these. These are tertiary assets that we have within our portfolio. The Frank M deposit, which sits relatively close to our mill, a low-grade deposit, uh, one that we can use as uh, a feed mix uh, should we find too high-grade uh, material uh, to go through the mill. And then the Finley tank in Arizona, uh, which is a, a vertical deposit, uh, just under a million pounds of resource. Uh, it's certainly not an asset we're focused on today, but certainly one that we can look to build around you know, should we decide to uh, focus uh, outside of Colorado and Utah. And that's it. Thank you for your time.